Okay, sometimes you can have something called an angular simple harmonic oscillator or a torsion pendulum. So I made a real one by clipping, this is going to sound really stupid, I clipped a clothespin onto a ukulele string, looks like this, just back and forth and back and forth. Here the clothespin is undergoing simple harmonic motion, but throughout an angle. So it's not position that's changing, it's like what angle it's at is what's changing. Okay, so this is a simplistic drawing of that, um, except for I've got a disc here because I didn't want to deal with something I didn't know the rotational inertia of. Anyway, the idea is here's your zero, and this thing just goes back and forth and back and forth between maximum theta in radians and Max and negative maximum theta in radians. Works just like simple harmonic motion, it's just that instead of um, going between x max and negative x, you're going for angle. Now, when it does this, it acts just like a mass on a spring, um, except for we're not dealing with force anymore to restore it back to, you know, like, to pull the spring back to equilibrium. We're dealing with um, the torque provided by this, this uh, cable here. So in mine it was a ukulele string, but uh, we can do anything that has any kind of springiness to it. So metal wire, um, I even tried making out of yarn once, that didn't work so well, but it did work a little bit. So if we do that, basically the restoring force, instead of Hooke's Law, it's like Hooke's Law, but for torque. So the restoring torque is equal to negative kappa, no, it's really hard to do a kappa, um, times theta. Kappa is a Greek letter that looks like a really small, like, smushed K thing um, times theta. So this look, looks, looks a lot, I mean, this looks a lot like the force of a spring was equal to negative spring constant times x. Remember that? So it's just the same except for instead of force using torque, instead of x using theta, instead of spring constant k, we're using the torsion constant kappa. Okay, so if this is true, if this is the restoring force, then in the end, what we get for the period of this oscillation is, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing, because it's the same kind of thing you do um, for a mass on a spring. Well, actually, let's start there. Let's say, okay, so if this is for a mass on a spring, then we found that the period of a mass on a spring was 2 pi times the square root of m over k. For a torsion pendulum, same idea, still 2 pi, we just replace mass with the angular equivalent of mass, which is angular moment, or ang uh, sorry, angular moment of inertia, and we replace k with kappa, which looks like a k, but it's a kappa, I swear. Okay, so this is, this is, this is for a torsion pendulum. Torsion pendulum. I haven't seen a lot of these on the AP test, but they do show up, like, sometimes. And all you need to know is that the period is the same as for a mass on the spring, just replace all of the linear stuff with angular stuff and you'll be good.